very softly, just like that. Come to the side and let the light, right? Come over here, come into my shadows, maybe go down a little, right? Just like that. We're gonna swipe up and look how they become sharper and darker. Come in here, start to light these guys up. Piece of, uh, of fence, so they don't all have to match is what I'm saying. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 18 by 20 inch sunset, lenticular clouds, snow covered mountains, giant red and brown rocks, gorgeous trees, a little fence, a snowy path. Oh, it came out fantastic. And you're obviously excited about this one. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're gonna do it just like this. Holy cow, we're back in the studio again. It's Paint with Josh. Welcome. Let's go through the colors we have today. Uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Bright Red, Cad yellow, uh, yellow ochre, sap green, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. I have this crazy idea in my head. We're going to try to work everything in all together, and we'll see how it comes out. You guys have already seen it. I'm literally about to make it up right as we go. So hopefully it comes out good, and you'll be able to actually see this video. So we've literally done nothing to the canvas, right? Nice and dry. I've taken my Bob Ross liquid white. Looks just like that. Obviously the lid is off because I shook the lid up. And whatever gets trapped inside the lid is pretty much just about enough to get onto our canvas, right? I don't want to put it all in one spot. I want to kind of drop it a little here, a little there, kind of get it up, and then we can really stretch it. And a lot of people know how to do this section, but a lot of people don't. So in a few videos every so often, we like to show you how we prep the canvas. And I know it takes a little bit longer. So if you need to scroll through, and I'm too boring to watch, then uh, give us a nice scroll, like the video first, and then scroll past this, right? All right, now you're just crisscrossing back and forth, back and forth, just like this, but in fast motion, right? All it's doing is dragging a little bit of the white over here, pushing a little bit over there, dragging some over here, back and forth. All we're trying to do is get the canvas nice and slick, just a very small amount of wet. That's all we need. So we may need a little bit more liquid white. Apparently, I didn't shake it up vigorously enough. So let's take those kind of bigger globs and we're going to Kind of dump them out and then just sort of stretch it. Right? That's why I never like it to dump all in one place because then you have to stretch the whole thing all the way across the canvas. And nobody wants to do that. It's going to be too thick in one spot, not thick in the other spot. Not thick enough anyway, huh? Man, it feels good being back from vacation. For you guys, it's what, the, the 7th of December? But for me, it's still November. I'm fresh back off vacation. I have all these cool ideas in my brain. And then we're going to see if we can't get them to come out onto the canvas. So maybe not all of them in this one painting, but definitely being on, uh, on vacation gives you inspiration. That's for sure. All the mountains we saw when we were driving, every single thing, all stuck in my brain somewhere. Okay, now we're going to go back and forth across the entire thing. And that makes sure that it's nice and slick. If you, if you feel it like really grip in a certain spot, then you know it's very thick in that area and you have to blend it out more, right? You don't want it to be very thick at all. Just touch it, get the smallest little bit right there. Or you'll be able to see all the little ridges in your fingerprints and all sorts of stuff. So now that that's done, let's take a little bit of that liquid white and we're gonna get some of it into a different lid. I call this my Petri dish. Right? Just take a couple little scoops. We may need a little bit more. We may come back later, may not. And that's what the old Petri dish looks like. I have to keep it rotating, otherwise all the liquid white will go down to one spot. Now, we don't need a whole lot. One more thing before we get started. Our odorless mineral spirits. This is what we use to clean the brushes with. I have a big, thick, nasty cup. So what I'm going to do is go dip into my cup here very, very lightly. You don't have to dip the whole brush. That's going to be too much. And then I'm spinning it off back and forth and we'll shake it into the trash can and into the old bucket. And the old bucket looks a lot like that. Just a golf ball basket down in the bottom of this gross, nasty thing. And so it was the only thing I had in my garage when I very first started painting. And I was like, oh, this will work to beat the bristles with. And uh, I've had like four years later and I still have the dang thing. And it works perfectly. All right, now I had in my mind, I had a sunset planned with a big cloud. So let's switch to a smaller brush. And that way we don't push the paint too far, right? Why don't we get a little bit of our, our cad yellow, smallest little bit of the bright red, maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre, all on the brush at the same time. And then maybe, who knows, underneath here, 
and just start laying out a little bit of that sunsetty orangey color. And if it starts to go real light, that's the liquid white doing its job. That liquid white allows it to blend into all these different shades of color. It's fantastic. So a little yellow ochre, a little red, a little cad yellow, the brightest one. All of our bright colors right here. Let's take a little bit of the yellow, uh, yellow ochre and a little bit of the red so it's a little darker as we come up in our sky over here. Just dumping it on, not doing anything fancy, not blending it out, not doing anything because we're gonna take our big two inch brush and blend that guy out. Why don't we take a little bit of that color? We'll just come down here too. Why not? Doesn't even have to match or anything. It really doesn't. You can literally have whatever you wanna have your sky look like. That's what it's gonna look like. And you see that ridge back in between the canvas back there? A lot of times we'll do it when we blend it out. But if you can get your hand back behind there, you can see my fingers back here. And then blend those little lines out. Back and forth, back and forth. Slide my arm down. Right, you can get rid of that whole little thing. Gone, just like that. Now, that's starting to look gorgeous. Let's take a little bit more red, just straight red. And drop that in. Just so when we blend it, we have all these different colors, right? You have to imagine what it's going to look like after you blend it. Because right now, it kind of looks like a kid's sunset. I get it. I feel you. I totally feel you. A little bit more of the red, a little bit more of that uh, yellow ochre, just on the brush, back and forth, straight right here. Yeah, maybe we'll throw some water in. Who knows? You guys have already seen it. You've already seen it. I'm literally painting it as we go. Now remember, I want this giant white cloud, and for that, I don't want to have too much paint on the canvas. So let's take our crimson, and whatever's left on the brush. Doesn't have to, you don't have to brush or clean it or anything like that. See how we're coming in from this side? And then here, now we're starting to come in from the other side. See what I mean? So that way we'll get these cool streaks out into our sky. A little crimson, a little black. Kind of start to go that deeper purpley color over here. Maybe the smallest touch of blue. See how powerful that blue is? I just tried to grab the littlest, littlest bit and it's still all over the brush. So, and that was just from the teeniest, tiniest little swipe of blue. You can tell from the difference in all these other ones, how far that blue will really take over your scene. And especially right here where you have blue and, and our kind of orangey yellow mixed up. Let's get a little bit more crimson. And we'll pop that crimson in there. And that purple will blend more easily with the orange than the blue will. Okay, now let's cover the edges. Gotta cover the sides. It helps if you put liquid white on the sides. It makes it a little easier, a little faster to do. But just for the meantime, I'm gonna take this color, which is sort of a dark purpley color, and just put that down the sides. It may end up changing over time. But this is much easier for your client if they buy your painting, if you sell, you're lucky enough to sell one, right? My sales don't come as often as I wish they would, but when you're lucky enough to sell one, your, your buyer doesn't have to frame your canvas, right? They don't have to go spend any money or do anything crazy. And I think it just makes it look a little bit more finished and done, right? Versus anything else. All right, take a little bit of that. Let's come back in here. We're gonna grab that black and crimson again little bit of the blue, not too much, because it's going to want to take over. Look, already. Going to line a little, kind of let it blend up into there. Maybe we'll leave this kind of wider patch so it can grow, right? Because it's going to grow. Whatever we put on the canvas wants to grow like crazy. So, leave this good open-sized area, and then we can kind of figure out what our cloud might look like, if we should leave it white, if we should cover it. And just like that. Back and forth. Real straight, though. Got to have it be straight. Bam, 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 bam. You can blend out all those little lines. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies. All right. Blend out all those little lines. You can go back and forth. Doesn't really even have to be very thick, right? We're going to take it and really make it pretty now. So let's wash that brush off. Get all of those colors. I think we used every single color we have besides the browns and the white and the green, right? Didn't use those but just about every other color onto the canvas, and it looks amazing. <clears throat> My brush is like this beautiful color purple. It's fantastic. Never get it all out. Never can get it all out. All right, let's take a clean, dry two inch brush, just like this, all right? Go back and forth, right into our sky, and I wanna start in the lightest area, and that, in this instance, is the white. So let's go around the edge of the white. We'll come in here. Just starting to blend that orange kind of up into the white, right? I don't want to lose all the white. That's why we left it like that. We don't want to lose it. Can't lose it. But we're going to take it from the edge and sort of blend it so it becomes softer. It's not such an abrupt line like this, right? 
That looks horrible. We have to blend all that out. So let's do our, our lighter section first, right? All these things back and forth. The more we blend them, the more they're gonna turn into this gorgeous hue that changes from pink to orange, darker orange, darker red over here. It's fantastic. And yours will look totally different, right? You won't have the same amount of red over here or the same amount of orange or yellow on your brush when you went up to do it. And so yours is going to look a little bit different, but it's gonna be so great. That's the best part about art is that no matter what we do, if we all use the same colors, we're gonna have totally different results. And that's fantastic to me. That is my favorite thing about art, really. I'm gonna pull some of that purple down into there just to let it mix in, right? You never know where it's gonna stop. Where does that purple eventually end up quitting blending with that orange, right? Very cool. Now I'm gonna come up here just very lightly because remember how strong that blue is, it's really gonna to wanna to grow. So just along this edge, just the edges, going back and forth with our little X's along the edge of that white. Not really touching much else, right? Because I don't want all of the color to grow down into here yet. Okay, now we're gonna come out here into the, the top and really start to blend. And again, look at that blue. It really wants to grow all the way across the scene and it will, it will if you let it. You can't let it happen, right? That's why we only use small amounts of blue in some of these scenes because it really wants to grow and meet up with this yellow down here. And that's not what I want, right? Very soft. The more you blend, the more your colors will change. If you want more like streaks, don't pull it so hard. Don't blend so much, right? All depending on what you want it to look like. And I like leaving a few streaks in the sky every so often. And then sometimes we really blend it out like this guy. It becomes very soft, very pastel-y. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And look at how much white we lost. It was initially this giant thing and now it's just this little bit. But that's all we really need. That's all we really need. What if we took anyway, and took some of this darker kind of crimsony color and just kind of laid out a bottom for our cloud, right? Some of it wore away, which is okay. We don't need it to be, and we don't even need to go back to the palette, right? We can just grab some from the top corners, come back in here, make it a little bit darker. Depends on what you want your cloud to look like, right? Very neat. I like that lenticular cloud we painted last couple Fridays ago. And, uh, and that's what we're going to try to recreate on this one right here and throw up the gold mountain in there. It's going to be fantastic. Look at all this light underneath. Oh, it's great. And that's going to be the bottom of our cloud. And again, you can go back and take your different colors and start to pop them in. We have all these little differences in our cloud, right? Very lightly because I don't want it to mix in and be too crazy. But a cool kind of a shape to a cloud, just like that. All right, let's wash this old two-inch brush off because we're not going to need it anymore and don't even worry that we didn't blend down here because we're going to be swiping over this so many times that it's going to end up blending itself and if you blend it all right now you might over blend it and you'll lose these cool little things that happen all on their own very neat we can decide where we want our horizon to be is this where the water starts right here so you have that glow in the sky down in the water what's happening we're going to find out again you guys have already seen it that's why you clicked on the link right and right now, like this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, copy the link, send it to your grandma. And it really helps when you guys hit that like button, I swear. You think it doesn't, but it really does. All right, let's come back in just for a little bit more darkness. There's the smallest, teeniest, tiniest amount of black, a little bit of crimson, kind of dab it onto our brush so it's not a whole lot, right? And then we'll come back up. And just add that littlest bit. You don't want to have any blue in here because we don't want it to blend in with our sky, right? Different levels. That's going to make our cloud look a little bit, kind of, it's going to give us depth and distance with that cloud. Just like that. It was so much fun to play around with the clouds in the sky too. And this is just the shadowing, right? You can take yours, you can have it wherever you want, but I don't want to lose all this brightness, all that light that's trying to get away from above the top of this guy. All right, let's take a fan brush. At least that's how I like doing it. You can do it with a palette knife. You can do it with your one inch brush or two inch brush, whatever. We're gonna do it with a fan brush. So let's take our, our white and I don't want it to be just so perfectly white. So I'm gonna grab this time, just a little bit of red, one little swipe of red. And we're gonna come over here, maybe more than one little swipe. I don't want it to be too crazy red, right? Snag up some of that white. Just we get this cool little pinky kind of color. And then who knows, maybe we'll have this arc again like we did last time. Across the whole thing, right? And it's this very circular cloud. So we're gonna dump on a lot of that pinky color, a lot of our white, 
right? We can have it come out as far as we want. Doesn't matter. You you decide what you want it to look like. All right? I'm gonna dump on some of that white color, and it's gonna want to blend with all those colors back behind it. <clears throat> so we're gonna take a clean one-inch brush, very lightly, maybe along the edge, because we don't want it to grow down too far. But then as we get in here, very small little circles. And all that's doing is kind of mixing up the paint, mixing it in with this kind of color underneath, all sorts of little things happening. Mixing with our, our back colors, our differences back here. You got all these little things, and maybe on this guy, just cause he's so light out there. And I don't know what he's doing, but he wants to be out there. Bam, just like that. Now we're gonna take our two inch brush, very softly, drag it up from the bottom, right? So you get some of those, those shadows to drag up as well. Very softly, just like that. Come to the side, and all of a sudden we have this very flat topped cloud starting to appear. All right, now we're gonna come in here. Let's go a little bit crimsony. We'll make it a little darker for our uh, next bit of cloud on the top. All right, it's a lot of white paint for this, these kinds of clouds, let me tell you. All right, scraping it up so there's a good amount, and then maybe the next little bit came in like that. Soft little rounded thing though, right? Keep that rounded edge and keep a kind of a disconnecting color between our two sets, right? We don't wanna have, we don't wanna have it too crazy. Maybe even take the smallest little bit of our dark color and kind of decide where, where our disconnect is, okay? We'll take this very softly because I don't wanna ruin all that little bit of shadow back there but I don't wanna show all my little brush strokes either, right? Very soft little thing. And then we're gonna come down with this guy very lightly. I don't want it to overtake, and we're gonna go up as well. Don't want it to overtake the cloud below it. I don't wanna kind of get rid of all that shadow in there. But look as we start to drag it up. Get this cool little thing happening up here. That was, the, that was one of my favorite clouds that we did that last Friday night freestyle. And man, it turned out good. So a little bit like that. Very neat. Okay, again, taking our two inch brush very softly. We're not trying to move the paint. We're just trying to flatten it a little bit, All right? Very softly to the side and go across the whole canvas. Bam. Very neat little thing. Cool little bit of cloud. All the colors around it and underneath it. Let's take a little bit of our black. Just a little bit, because I love that it had like a little, a dark little center in it. Almost like there was a, like a tunnel leading upwards, right? Very cool. A little oval shape is all we need. And you don't need a whole lot of paint. You really don't. You don't want to move it too crazily enough, right? Back and forth swipes until it's kind of blended away. Now we'll come in with a new little bit. Another little section of white that came in here. Why don't we just bounce this guy in? It's gotta be in front of our, our further away area though. Don't want it to be, you know what I mean? You don't want to put it down too far. It's not gonna have the same effect. Take this guy very lightly, very lightly. Coming out in front, right? Then we don't know what's going on. It's taking some of that light color, covering over some of the dark shadow behind it. It pushes it back, gives us distance. Very soft. Maybe this guy doesn't even have a shadow. We'll just keep mixing him in with that orange underneath until it's just very softly kind of floating out there. Take our two inch brush again, soft little swipes up over to the side. Makes it nice and gentle. Amazing. I love it. Let's see if there was a little bit of that color back there though, there may be a little, just a little shadow. So I'm just barely, just barely dabbing in just a couple little things. Because again, they're going to want to grow and blend, and I don't want them to mix in, get rid of too much, right? But the more little things we can dab on, the more little details we're going to have. And again, they're not a perfect flat line. Don't want them to be straight. you got to have those little differences in color. We talk about them all the time. Look at that cloud now. Ooh, it's almost art. Very cool. Okay, let's see if we can't make it a little bit brighter up top with our our palette knife. So let's scrape up this stuff we got right here. All right, and then we're really gonna kind of flatten it on just so it stands out. And then we're very lightly gonna mix it. See how it's flattened on like that? Just like a, kind of like a palette knife cloud or a palette knife sky. And we take some of these guys and we'll go up. We're just with whatever's left, right? It doesn't have to be humongous. It doesn't have to look like mine. 
Don't want it to be too thick though, All right? Now we're gonna very softly go over that. So soft, because we don't want it to grow, right? Don't want to lose our little, our line in there. We're just trying to brighten it up a little bit. So very, very, very soft pressure. It's going to want to instantly blend with whatever colors are around it and underneath it. The colors on our brush, all sorts of stuff. It's going to want to blend with. Remember, try not to lose that little bit of dark line that we put in there. That's our savior right there. Very softly to the side. Man, that's a good looking cloud right there. Looks like a spaceship almost. And again, you don't even have to have it go to the top, right? If you want it to just be circular, shape it with your brush. Have cut that top off, right? You can even come in with a little bit darker color, maybe that crimson, right? Dump some of that dark color back in there. Very softly though, there's a lot of paint right here when you put it on with that palette knife and you're not trying to let it grow. There we go. Very neat, right? The more we push, the more we blend, the more our cloud's gonna change its shape. Very cool. All right, let's come in with one more little bright area. Maybe back in here. It came over that shadow. Maybe it's gonna wanna try to meet up with his buddy. Down just like that, right? We'll take this very lightly, very lightly, right? Because we don't want them, I mean, I'm sure. Okay, they can touch a little bit, just a little bit, right? However you want yours to look. Very lightly mix it out. Maybe that guy doesn't have any bit of shadow underneath him at all. Or maybe just from the colors on the brush. That's enough for my eyes anyway to say that that looks pretty dang neat right there. That is pretty dang neat. Okay, I'm gonna grab up maybe one, we had a couple soft little guys. Just jiggle them, jiggle them back in there. All right, a little bit thicker out here, and then they're gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner as they go back. Very far away little clouds. Again, knock the paint off the brush. Don't have to clean it, just wanna knock it off. All right, maybe this guy looks good just like that actually. Pull into the side, kind of straight as we can get and get this far off little floater. Or again, the more you mix it, the softer and softer, and softer it becomes. Till it looks how, what, however you want it to look. It's your cloud. Make it look how you want it to look. Very neat, very neat. Okay, let's wash some of these brushes off. All right, now I'm gonna take these, just kind of blend them out for my own brain. As I was sitting here cleaning the brushes, I looked up and kind of noticed that it didn't look how I wanted it to. So I'm gonna blend this guy out just like that. Very neat. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? Make sure these guys are nice and straight. Just by throwing them back there, very cool. Now I gotta clean this brush off again, my goodness. Now that's a pretty gorgeous sky, but I think if it was just a little bit more red, you can go back every once in a while and just sneak in some color. You know what I mean? We'll sneak it in and then we'll blend it. See how I left some space underneath the cloud and that way we can do our crisscrosses without coming up and touching our cloud and just add in that little bit of red hue back there. And then again, you wanna blend it until you can't really tell that you even went back and added it, right? And it's much easier underneath areas that don't have clouds. There we go. Let's throw some of that on there. And I'll hold this guy so he doesn't move on me. There we go. And then I'm gonna blend all those colors, blend them together, bring them back, bring them forward. So I like the way that it looks, right? Got the yellow over here, got the red over here. Like it's getting darker. Very, very neat. Very neat, very neat. Let me take the littlest bit of red underneath this guy. There we go. Doesn't always need to be that purpley shadowy color. That looks very cool. We'll do that again. A little bit more of that red and we'll go underneath here. See if we can't create the effect of a flat bottom cloud with some red underneath it. Very cool. Maybe a small little bit of crimson underneath there as well. Just to help it drag out. Now I'm dragging it too far, right? It's too far over. That's not as far as I want to go. So I'm going to I'm gonna dry the brush, beat it on the paper towel. I'm gonna start pulling it backwards and bringing this color back this way, right? I don't want it to go too far over that way. So you can drag it back to the side that you want it to be on. Just like that. A little bit more of that purpley color down in here too, just for me. Just cause I think it needs a little bit back there. Just like that, very cool. You see what you can do with just the smallest little streak of color back here, right? And then you take and you blend it back. 
and all of a sudden it may look like another further off cloud because we left dark, we left that light area, and then we had another little bit of dark. It's just not so lit up like the other ones are, right? Very cool. Smallest little things can make the biggest difference. Just like that. This guy is so thick with paint. There we go. Right? You take it so lightly back and forth across the entire sky. And because we're not trying to push any of that paint, we're not dragging it anywhere, right? Let's go back and finish our, our little, uh, our straight lines. There we go. Just like so. Just by sticking your hand back there, you can get rid of those lines. Very neat. You still see them down here. Okay, let's get ready to make a mountain. <clears throat> now we're gonna come over here and grab up our black, our crimson, our blue, maybe a little bit of that darker brown mixture. And we'll come down here. And again, you want them to be very dark. So let's use a little bit more crimson than blue so we get that darker purple color, maybe a bit more black. Right? It's, it's very blue on my palette here, you can see. And I don't want it to be so blue, I want it to be dark. There we go. Now we're gonna take that, wipe the knife off so it's nice and clean. <clears throat> Come back, scrape up a little roll, just like that. Nothing too crazy, nothing too big. Right, and then we'll come back up here and decide where we want our mountain to be, right? And we have to push some of the clouds back. So no matter how gorgeous your clouds are, they have to be pushed backwards by this cloud. And anywhere where you get that white up there, scrape it away in whatever shape you want your cloud to be, and then or your mountain to be, and it'll be much easier to drop that dark paint on there. If it really starts blending with all the clouds and really turning white, then you got you got too much cloud paint. You gotta scrape it away. Cool little differences. Leave some of that dark in there. Right? Doesn't matter what it looks like down here. You can make it look however you want, but I do want to save that nice cloud. So why don't we come down? It'll we'll pop up. You have to get rid of a little piece of him. It's cool if you leave a little piece of him behind there as well. Helps your eye kind of connect and see what it wants to see. There we go. And this guy, you can do whatever. You can be flat. You can be angled, you can do all sorts of different things and let him play out however he's gonna come out. Maybe he's got a ridge that goes down this way, right? All this stuff in here. You decide what you want it to look like. You can take a two inch brush if you want. Pull it off to the side. Very flat, right? You have to have those little differences. Maybe this guy's got a little ridge in here. All depends on how much paint I'm grabbing and which way I'm pulling, right? Maybe he went down this way. And this guy, we're not gonna touch a whole lot of that black paint back there because it's really gonna wanna grow far, right? Just using the last couple corners of the brush is all. Nothing crazy. What happens when you grab the rest of that? If you start too much or too dark, it's really not gonna work. Now we'll come in with this guy, trying to save those little light areas, right? But not showing too much. Just a couple little bits. Helps kind of push that mountain back. Right? Maybe this guy connects in back here. Just like that, you got these really cool mountains starting to form, starting to come together. Right? Maybe this guy, maybe he was very sharp up here. I like doing them sometimes where they're just straight down, just a sheer cliff, right? Going off to the side. Because you never wanna have them be real straight up, right? Let it go off and let it blend over here. That's very cool, it's, it's, it's mysterious. Look at that, don't know where it ends. Does it go all the way off the side or no? Right, drag some of this guy down. Maybe we got another ridge that comes down in there. We can have this whole thing be mountains. It wasn't my plan, but that could, that's, could be what it turns out to be. All right, let this guy get soft as we come down here, and then we can come in and decide where we want to put a new little piece. But first, let's throw some shadows on this guy. Very cool looking little sunsetty mountain back here. All right, let's use some of the pink that's already in our white. So and that's that, that was that crimson. And that'll be our highlights. It's got the teeniest, tiniest amount of crimson in it. Just a little touch, because too much is, is too much, right? You can definitely have too much pink, and then it won't look like a snowy scene. I want to have a little bit more, actually. I never make enough snow color. All right, get rid of all the paint off of there. We're gonna come back, grab a little bit of blue, and I'm, I didn't even grab from the pile. I just scraped up what was there, because all you need is just a little. Just a look at how much blue took over right there, just from the teeniest little scrape. Now we need to get some more white. Okay, now we have our different shadows here. We have our highlight color, we have our shadow one, we have our shadow two, and then we can even go to shadow three 
as it being the blue or black just straight up if we need to go that far make it that dark but i don't think we'll need to do that so let's come into our shadows here scrape up a little bit and maybe it looks like more of the light is on that side so we'll come in here with our knife and just make soft little things letting that blue paint kind of fall off the knife however it wants to right you don't try to force it just let it live in there let it break let it get all those cool little differences those neat little things to start to happen all right maybe we had a little bit back in in here trying to come down to that ridge that we had created right and then we can come back in and light it up light up. every dark area that you'll see here is going to be white we're doing the negative space first adding our shadows in and all sorts of little things all right a little bit of shadow tuck it underneath that guy why not all right come back in here maybe there's another little ridge or maybe it came up and there was another little shadowy area underneath there. Who knows? Make it up as you go. That's what I like to do. Come over here on the back half. Start to pull it down, let it slide off, right? It's going to the side in this one direction. Look at all those open spaces. Don't, don't get rid of those. Those are awesome. You don't want to get rid of those open spaces. And again, now, can you even tell if it, does it continue? Does it not? Very neat. Take some of our shadows straight down. The more and more you go over it, the more it's going to blend in and the more things you're going to ruin. So if you see something really cool, try not to go over it too many times. All right, put some of that blue back in here. Because why not? Just like that. Starting to build our mountain. Where does the light hit? Maybe back in here. It was on the littlest peak. Back in there, maybe draw it down. Now all this dark area is room for light, right? Room for snowy highlights, which is why we never make enough. So scrape up a little bit of that white. Come over here, maybe on the back side of this guy. Look, just pull it off, just like that. These very cool little breaks. This is why having the thick oil paint is the easiest way to do it. The best way to go is having that big, thick, expensive paint. I know it's a, I know it's a financial burden. It is to me too. I feel you. But it really is the only way to get those cool techniques is to use the proper stuff. Right? Little things. Don't even have to cover up all that dark back there. Your brain wants you to. It's like, hey, you missed the spot. Go back and cover that. You're like, no, 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 no. That, that was on purpose. I didn't miss that spot. And I'll come back up in here. Let's say, who knows, maybe there's a little bit that started to work its way into this little valley back in there, right? And that part got lit up and that part was in the shadow. Come down here very softly, very softly. Right? You're scraping it up. You're not allowing the knife to touch the canvas. You're allowing that roll of paint to come off. Once you hear the scrape, you know you're out of paint on the end of your tool, right? And look, as we come down and touch this orange and then come back up in here, just to fix something, it transfers some of that orange color back up in there. Very cool. Come back to our white. Well, our pinkish white on the top of this. And what's cool is you can go over your shadows. You don't have to keep everything. Not every single piece of shadow that you put out there, you have to abide by and not cover, right? Just like that. But that little bit of blue in between, that's what helps your eye realize what's happening with the light. All right, come over here, come into my shadows, maybe go down a little. And then we got that straight ridge, starts to fall, right? That white is in different places. Our blue is in different places. It's getting lit up in different areas. It doesn't have to be straight. You don't have to fill in every area. You know, it depends on what you want yours to look like. It kind of looks like steps to me, like it's leading up around the edge, right? And on the edge over here, you gotta make sure that our most exposed spot is gonna be covered in white, whether or not it's the teeniest little bit of white or, you know, the thickest bit of white on your canvas. You gotta have that be nice and bright. I think those little dark areas though, it's so neat. It's so neat. Maybe we have just a little bit of our white kind of play into that side over there. And just by doing that, we picked up a little blue and brought it back. All right, it's all about what is it gonna look like when we get finished based on our angles of our knife and everything else starts to fall down. Get that open space right there. It's a little bit too bright. So let's get our, our blue paint, kind of throw it back in there. But again, not covering every single piece with blue. Don't have to have it all be blue. Maybe in between some of these brighter areas, kind of throw it out like that. And our last little bit of white paint, we can extend this guy over here. You can do whatever you want to do. Now, let's take our brush. Nice and dry brush. Right, nice dry brush. We're going to come up here. Just like that. 
swiping upwards, dragging those highlights up the same, you know, the opposite way to which way we went. So if we came down, we go up. We came up over, or came down over here, then we go up over here. Just so softly though, so, so soft, like no hairs. They don't even touch the paint. So soft. And all that does is kind of blur it a little bit, like a photo. You got a little bit where it's in focus and a little bit of blur where the photo didn't really catch, right? That's how I like to paint anyway. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna start tapping on this guy. And all it's doing is bringing some of the color down and it's making it softer, right? It's making a nice soft little thing so we can have more layers on the canvas, right? It's gonna be hard to start putting more thick paint on top of all of this paint and then more paint and then more paint, right? You have to kind of soften it. Get it to go, you know, down to your next layer where it's gonna be nice and soft. And then you'll be able to stick that paint on there with ease. Right? Swipe it up, tap it. Now all of a sudden we have all this fog at the base of our, our little mountain. What's gonna happen back here? Those guys, very light little details, soft little things. All right, let's come in with a different little peak. Maybe we had a little bit more brown or dark our Van Dyke Brown, which is the darkest of the browns, All right? Mix that in a little bit with our black, but then say we came up here and there was like a, I don't know, it was like another chunk of rocky mountain that was inside here. Pushes all that mountain back. Scrape off the paint you don't want and then deposit what you do want in its place, right? And we'll have this whole another section of mountain we'll be able to light up and it's gonna be in the front, so it's gonna push that mountain back. Right. And depending on our angle of our knife or how we pull it out depends on what it's going to look like, of course. So, right. oh, what you feel, what do you see in your painting? What happened in yours? Did you get this big giant mountain that's just come out in front of this other one or, or what? What does yours look like? Very cool, dark brownish blackish color, right? We'll take our two inch brush again, start to pull out to the side. It helps push that one back where you can blend in. Maybe those two ridges came up, blended in together, right? Very cool. Just depositing a little bit of color, all in the angles of how we pull it down. Very soft. All right, take this guy, come down like this. This is how he would look in my mind, all right? Maybe it's very straight again. Like every time we come down and touch that lighter paint, it wants to come up and change what our paint looks like. So, grab him. Pull them off to the side. Don't have to even cover all the details or do anything. And now we have this whole other ridge that's connected to this little piece of mountain back here, right? Take that guy. I don't want to lose all the orange, so don't overdo it. Gotta save some of the orange. Very neat. Got a whole other little piece of mountain in there. Let's go back and make up a little bit more blue for our, our shadowy highlights. All right, we can start filling this whole thing again. Let's see, we could do something cool too. Let's do a little bit of brown and red and crimson. And we'll mix those guys up into like this red rocky sort of color. Look at that. Gorgeous, a little bit more brown, a little bit more red. Just depends on what you want them to look like, right? And that'll be our deepest, darkest shadows. Scrape up a little bit of that, mix it in with our dark. And it'll go even darker brown, kind of brownish reddish. So let's take this bit and it's not going to be at the very top. We don't need the red rocks to be all the way at the top. What we need them to do is sit around the bottom and collect all that different color. All right, we'll come up here. Maybe that'll be in the shadow. So this guy you might have them coming down. Like, gotta have enough paint on the knife. There we go. Coming down like this, leaving all those little breaks. Those are all the rocks that can't get covered by the snow. All the stuff that's too bright or too sharp too rigid to be sh to have the snow kind of cover over all of it, right? Very cool, very cool. Take some of those guys back there, a little bit more of the darker color because we're further away from the light. Just like that, we should have a very neat looking little mountain. Dumping some of that red on, right? Just like that, letting it mix in, leaving some of our initial shadows. Let's take some of our blue snow that maybe got stuck way up top starting to slide its way down, mixing in with those little browns, leaving certain areas. We don't need it all to be covered, right? Come down, you don't wanna overdo it, let it sit like that. 
Maybe the whole backside of this peak will be in the shadow. Little things that come down and match up. Small little differences. That's what I love the most. Right? Maybe a little bit on the back side of this peak. I'm going to blend in together. You get all these cool little things happening. Now we'll come in with our white. I'm going to mix with whatever colors we have up here. It's all good. We just don't want to have too many areas where our white and white touch. That, that's going to make you lose your mountain. It's going to disappear because it's going to look like the other mountain is. Back there, scrape up a little bit more white. Come down. All these little ridges start to mix in, start to blend together. And scrape up the rest of that reddish, brownish color. Come back in, kind of extend this guy down a little bit. There we go. Very cool. It's so much fun when you're making them up as you go. You guys think I'm kidding. It's I'm dead serious. There we go. Throw a little bit of white in there. Little shadows, little different things. Maybe there was a bit of white back in here. Just like that. Who knows? The sun likes to hit in different spots, right? Of course, we would have to have the smallest little peak of white right on the top. Very cool. Pushes that whole other mountain back there, right? Now, again, we're going to come back in with those same reverse strokes, however we did it before. That's how we're going to go in reverse. All right? so this side we start to turn. We start to come this way. And all it's doing is blurring the paint just a little bit, kind of depositing some of that color down here so we can start to make something out of it, all right? Take him, pull him off to the side, push down, tapping in, dragging some of that darker color down and away. Right? We'll turn on this side. That's all we're doing. Coming up every so often, grabbing some color, bringing it down. And as we do that, it softens this paint down here. It becomes almost as, as soft as the liquid white that we put on the canvas initially, right? Like I told you, we're going to swipe over this bottom so many times, it's not even going to make a difference. There we go. All the different angles, different things happening. And then you can go as high as you want with your fog, right? You can make little circles. You can do all sorts of stuff, right? Sometimes going up, grabbing a little bit of that color and then dropping it into a little circle over here gives you a little difference in your fog, a little bit of a different color, some more detail you maybe didn't see before. Very cool. All right, we'll go back and forth across this guy now because he's probably not going to be water anymore. And we'll see what it looks like, what's going to happen. Very cool. Okay. Why don't we take that, go back to that dark color that we have that we always make too much of, which is good because we end up using it. Go back to that darker color, maybe snag a little bit of the green. We're going to mix that in and maybe far off in the distance. we got a further away set of trees back here that are going to come and line up with our mountain, right? So maybe we'll come back in and just start tapping. Different heights, different levels. Right? Don't even have to go all the way. Maybe it's just a little patch, a little patch of forest out there. Bam, 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 right? Doesn't even really have to do anything. We're going to take our two-inch brush, just like this, right? Just like that. We're going to swipe up, and look how they become sharper and darker. And they start to blend. They start to look like faraway trees back there, right? Same thing. We're going to come in, taking our brush, kind of coming up, grabbing some of that darkness, bringing it down different levels and that way we have our little fog but the fog isn't just a straight line it's up and down and up and down just like that swiping them up right mixing up the bottom and then now you can't tell where the bottom is what's happening where did it go are they down this far are they just at the base are they up here are they down there what's going on what's going on Okay, now inside all of this light area is room for more forest. If you want to do more forest, if you want to do another mountain, or if you want to do this, you want to do that. All right, so why don't we get a little bit more of that darker color. And now this is going to stand out a little bit darker than when it had the green in there. So it'll be a different color. And maybe we'll come, I don't know, from over on this side. Start popping them in. You see how they're much more blackish, purplish color. All right, little things. Now watch, we'll come down in front. And as we pop them in, to that little area in the front, it's going to make it look like the further one is further away. Go back, get some more paint. If you really want them to be nice and sharp, you got to have enough paint on our brush, right? It's going to come up, coming down, and we'll go over here. Maybe the whole thing started to climb a, a, a hill over here. Who knows? Who knows? All up to you what you want it to look like. All right? You can even touch them on the side. 
because it really doesn't matter. All we're doing is putting a little bit of paint on there. And then when we come back in, see how they instantly turn darker. They grow a little bit taller and they instantly push those other bits of forest back. Look at those trees over here. They look exactly the same as these ones down here. You don't have to do it a certain way. And we're going to come in and again with the fog in different levels, different heights, going to go like a heart monitor, just like we do with the trees. The trees aren't all one shape all the way across. It's not one height. So our fog shouldn't be like that either. I'm going to drag it down. This is why you don't even need to really put much paint on the bottom of the canvas when we're initially doing the thing, because you're going to drag so many layers down and try to make it soft. And the more paint you have on the canvas, the harder it becomes, right? Just like that. That's kind of cool. Very neat. Again, you can take it, you can swipe it up. You can do little circles. You can do whatever. But the more you mess with the trees, the lighter they're going to become. And if you take one and kind of grab it, you can start to decide where your, your uh, horizon line is, where your next little bit of land is coming in. Very cool. Very cool. Swipe up on these guys. Now there's so many things you can do from here. I mean, we can add a cabin. You could put a cabin in right here. You could do a big tree. You could do more forest. You could do more rocks. You could do more mountains. You could do all sorts of things. So what are we gonna do is the question. What are we planning on doing? Why don't we do, hmm. We could do a couple big trees. We could do all sorts of stuff. We're just talking to ourselves now. That's all we're really doing, is talking to ourselves. And while we talk to ourselves and figure it out, why don't we take a little bit of our white right on the edge of the knife, smallest little bit, right? Just flatten it out all the way, scrape up a little, and then maybe, who knows, we'll get one to come out from this guy. Can't be a super crazy angle, and you don't want a whole lot of paint because it's gonna move, it's gonna grow. As soon as we take it like this, push it out, it's gonna make it grow. Very soft little things happening in the sky. I love that little contrail out there. Just shows a little piece of us in a painting, right? And I think that, I think people seem to like that. Every time I'm out, it, I was out in Las Vegas and I was out in the middle of the, of the forest and I looked up and in both places saw a contrail or an airplane flying across the sky. So nothing out of the ordinary for me. Maybe this guy was on a different angle over here. We'll put two, right? Much different angle of a little contrail, straight as you can be, and very light pressure. You don't want it to, don't want it to move. Just like that. It's exactly what I saw out in, the, out in the wilderness. It's fantastic. All right, we could do all sorts of stuff in here. Why don't we come in, we'll grab a little bit of our black, which started up here, as well as the crimson. They're very slippery today. A little crimson on our brush down into here, a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the red. Mixing them all up. There we go. Now we'll have this dark, little bit of color we can use, right? Maybe there was a few little humps, little rocks, little something came out over here. Don't need them to be too crazy. You wanna have this dark shadow to them, right? Fill them in. Maybe it came down and sat right about there too, and we can pull it out. So just fill in the rest. I like to cover the side where my rock is, have it be a little bit thicker down, you know, a little bit lower. I'm gonna start higher, gonna end lower down here. And that way, when we go to pull it out, you can do all sorts of different things. Now, that's going to be an awesome little bit of rock right in here. Don't want to show too much, and I don't like it being so perfect. There we go. Not a little perfect shape. All right, let's decide what we're going to do back here now. And take some of that same color onto our brush, just like that. And maybe there was a couple trees that were out here, and they were pretty far away, but I don't want to make them too tall. All right, come down like that. Now we're going to take our brush, very lightly tapping up into the tree, just like this, hoping you can see it, to make a little pine tree down, just like that. All we're doing is tapping with this side. We didn't even use this corner, right? You can go back and add more, more little details with your other side, make it look however you want to look, but just using the corner, that's really it. Let's take a couple more. We're gonna grab this bit. It always likes to flatten out on us. A little bit more blue, just to mix it up. Don't wanna have it be a you know, perfectly blue tree. We did grab up a lot of blue. Let's see. Come in here, and all I want is a nice little thin 
edge around my brush, right? Just like a, an old ax blade or a hatchet blade, something like that. And if that one's gonna go this way, maybe this guy's gonna go back here, a little bit taller, not even as far down, right? Come back in, corner of the brush, it's angled like this. It's not straight against the canvas. It's not perfectly flat up and down, it's at an angle. And I'm just touching with the corner of the brush. And the more we go down, the more it starts to look like a tree. Little teeny tiny things, right? And then we'll fix the top of that guy. But then we come in and all we're doing is just mushing it backwards and forwards, creating that thick texture, something for our <clears throat> highlights to grab onto, right? Hey, this guy, maybe he was on a little hill. So he was back here. Just from the color that's inside of the paint already, we're starting to see snow. And then you can decide, maybe that one goes up on a hill or whatever. Take some over here. I start to change what it looks like. Right? Just by adding those little differences in color back there. Don't want to pull this guy too far. I want to blend him too far out. I want to leave a lot of that lighter color as well. Now this guy, if we pull him out and go in front, now all of a sudden, We've got a different plane of land, different colors, different shadows, different textures, different things, right? Come back up in here, grab some of this thick paint right up the center and make our little treetop again, just like that. All you really got to do, center, make it nice and sharp. Now we can even take a little bit of our brown, just the smallest bit, and come in here and just make little little indications of a tree trunk inside this little tree back here. Just like that, soft little indication. And then we can go and cover over as much as we want or as little as we want or whatever we wanna do. Take this rock out here, pull it down. See why we come lower down here? It starts to make more sense in our brain. All right, the higher up it is, the further away it is, the lower down it is, the closer it is to me. That's how I paint it anyway. Dragging some of these guys, thick sections of rock, starting to change what our, our little thing looks like before we even highlight it, right? And then it gives us a guide about what we can do. How can we highlight that rock? Well, we can do it just like we have it set out already. And let's make up some more color. We'll get some red, some crimson, some brown, some yellow ochre, and the other brown, and a little bit of that dark kind of bluish color. We're gonna come down here. Make this deep, dark, reddish color. Fantastic. A little bit more of our yellows just to brighten it up a bit. A little bit more red. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit more crimson. And then as we grab from that pile, we're gonna grab so many different little things that as you sit out here, you'll be able to see all these little differences line up. Soft little red rocks, deep dark areas back in here where that darkness or shadow sits so you don't have the same color. A little bit more bright red, just letting it fall off the knife, rounded angles, rounded swipes, helps it. A little bit more of that shadowy color. Come back behind those little rounded angles and drop that darker color in. And this guy starts to fall down that way, who knows? Who knows, a little bit more of our red up here, our kind of reddish color that we've created, leaving all those little dark areas. So you don't want to have them all bright, right? Let's even, we can brighten this up with a little bit of white and just change the color again. Man, fantastic. Come in here, start to light these guys up. Very cool, little differences though. Remember, maybe the snow sat on top and it didn't go all the way down. Couldn't find the bottom of that rock, right? All these little different things help our brain figure out what's happening over here. A little bit more of that red, mixing it in. I never just want to go straight red. Always mix it because you're gonna you're gonna get these very cool little tones when we go and mix stuff versus just putting this straight color on. That's not what you want. A little bit more of our brown, the two browns. Mix those both in. All right, come back in here, scrape them into that darker area our deeper, darker shadows. And that's all it is, light, dark, light, dark, right? That's how you create the depth and the distance in your paintings. 
little play of light and dark. That's all you really need, right? Now, then we're gonna come back in with our two inch brush or one inch brush or whatever, whichever one's more comfortable for you. And then we're gonna go opposite to the way that we pulled down very lightly, softening just a couple hairs, just to just change it the smallest bit. Very soft little things happening. All the angles though, angles, 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 right? Then we're gonna come in here. And we're just gonna dab at these base, the base of it right here, just to soften the paint. Pull it out like that. Now all of a sudden we can throw something else right here at the bottom. Do something neat, right? Pull that color out. Save that little bit of white in there. That's all you really need. All right, I say we can do. Let's do a tree off the top of this guy. Right, so a little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of that bluish color that we had in there, mixed up with all the deep dark colors. And who knows, maybe off the top of here, we'll just do a little guy, not even as tall as the as the mountain, right? Come in, little dabs up, one at a time. The more you go down, the more you push in and go out. In, now eventually we're using the entire, you know, bit of our tree trunk a uh, bit of our uh, our brush length, right? The entire length of it to create the very bottom. We don't need all that height up here, you know, that width up here at the top. Definitely not. I have, I see another little, another little spot for a tree. Maybe this guy's on a angle because he's just about to fall off. He's not happy up here, right? Little dabs going up, going up and bend back and forth. See how we do it? Back and forth, back and forth. Dab it on there, just like that. Filling in little areas, very cool. We can put a little fence back here too. We'll just go crazy. It's my first time back from, first time painting from, back from vacation. You guys are in for it, let me tell you. All right, let's get a little bit of that blue, just the smallest area. I want to come down here. Get a little of our liquid white down into our white and blue area. You want to go over it to where it's nice and sloppy, right? So depending on how much paint you have there. All these little differences on the brush. Look at that. Come back over here. I don't know, maybe this guy will tap the top and then just start dropping on little things. A little bit, look, that littlest thing, right? Leaving most of the tree in shadow. Then you come down and you skip, and you skip, and you skip, and you skip, and you don't light up everything. We're never gonna see the entire tree, right? Leave those little dark, uh, little dark areas, little different things. Very cool, just like that. We're gonna flip the brush over, go on this guy, tap the top, come back up just on the right side. Remember, all of our light is over there. So just gonna tap in, all right? Making a little Z shape, bam, 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 bam. All right, so we come down here, and then we go back, and then we go back, and then we go back. Back and forth till you have a nice little covered tree, all right? The more you touch, the more it's gonna ruin the little things. Now, I've got all this dark paint on top of all of that light paint. Right? I don't want that. So I'm going to dab off the brush. Just wipe it on a paper towel. Get all that color back off of there. And then we're going to come back in and reload. So back into the liquid white. Back into this area over here. Got to have some of that oil paint in there to keep it kind of thick. You don't want it to be so super sloppy. All right, just like that. Come back over here. I'm going to choose which one. Let's go this guy. Dabbing on the top just to get any little bit. And then we're going to come up in here and start just with the corner. Dumping on little pieces of high lit branch, right? Never gonna see it all. And the more and more you go over it, the more you're gonna ruin all the cool little details. So leave those little dark areas in there. Very neat, just like that. That guy is covered. He is covered up. Okay, I'm gonna go one more time into our liquid white, over onto this guy, little tap, and then we start tapping up. Look, you can even leave little globs like that. The forest is never a perfect shape. Right? It's not a, the tree is not something you're never gonna, it's never gonna be like a perfect painting, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what makes a perfect painting, that it's not perfect, it's sloppy. And that's what's most fun to me. All right, why don't we take a little bit of that darker color on the end of our fan brush and just perhaps, just have a little bit of, I don't know, some kind of mess over here. that's covering a little bit of our rocks, right? Just to have a little bit growing down the side of the tree. Maybe this guy, just in little things, kind of making some areas connect, some areas not connect, just dabbing it on. And that way we'll have this cool little bit of like bushy, like we even come above the, 
and like there's a little bush on the top of that guy, All right? Which is fun to come back and highlight. And then we go just little things, tap, 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 little things, right? Less, even less than the tree because we're not trying to cover this whole thing. And then maybe just down the side, a couple little bits of snow that got lit up, a little bit of grass that's holding on to a couple little bits, little things, small, 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 right? I always tell myself, and then I end up doing too many, the little bits of light on the edge of our darkness. Doesn't even have to light them all up, right? Little things, flip our brush over, little dabs, just to make it look messy. That's all we really want, is for it to look messy back there. All right, and come back over here, scrape up some little sticks and twigs and little things that grow at the base of our trees. All right, just by scrape, literally scraping away the paint off of the canvas. I get these cool little things. You're like, oh no, I went down too far, all right? It's okay, come back and fill it into wherever you needed it to be. Just like that. All right, let's do a little bit of a fence post over here, just cause I wanna have some fun. It's already an hour. I mean, we're done with the painting already. You don't have to continue, but if you want, we'll go a little bit longer and maybe there was a little bit of a fence that got put up out here. Right? I don't want it to be the straightest fence. I want mine to kind of go down at an angle like that. It right? helps the, the land not be so straight. Right? Maybe this guy had a little little bit. Again, we're going to go down. And then I want to have one fall off. There we go. Really went down. Okay, come in here. We're going to make our little sidebars, right? Little side pieces above and below. And the closer they come to us, the further down they go, right? Got to go above and below and belower than that one, right? You can go down as far as you want. It's really not going to make a difference. <clears throat> we're going to feed it back. Okay, now because our, our fence line is back behind the post, we need to make it look like this guy's furthest away, and this guy's next, but not on the same level, right? And then this guy, if we blend him in right there, now it looks like our fence goes back behind the pole, uh, back behind that rock versus being right here, right? Very cool, very neat. You can even do it out there. We could do it all around. You could do all sorts of fences. And now we're going to scrape up our white a little bit, a little bit of liquid white too. Just a touch. We got to make it light enough where it's going to stick, right? Start mixing our white in, pulling it out very flat, scrape up tiny little line. And because our light is on that side, we're going to go on the right side of our little guy. See, just on the right, leaving that shadow, right? You don't even have to touch them. Uh, you know, like the, the white and the black, they don't have to connect, right? You could come on the outside and not even touch the original one and still have it look very cool. It looks even thicker like that, right? Go back in with our white, very small little bits so we don't lose that deep dark shadow of the piece that fell. And then on the top, you don't want to cover it. You just want it to sit on the top, just like that. If you cover it over and it's all white, and guess what? Nobody's going to believe that it's a fence because it's all white. You have to have those deep, dark shadows, which is why we use that black in there, right? Very cool. You don't want to have it be too crazy big either. Otherwise, it starts to lose its effect. A little bit of white just on the top of that as it goes back behind the tree. Very neat. Very neat. I mean, you could take... This snow, we can start to pull snow out from here. You can do whatever you want to do. Just scraping up the white. Maybe it got up in here. Maybe it starts to level out. All depends on what you want it to look like. Only because I want it to be a little bit brighter over here is all. There we go. Now, I never like it to just be the knife, so we got to blend it very softly. Kind of shaping it in the same direction of pole that we were pulling. Right? Just that little bit just helps. Maybe this whole thing is covered in snow and we got our shadows and we got all sorts of stuff, right? These guys go down and to the side, not just a straight down. We're going down and then flattening out to meet up with all of our stuff over there, right? Very cool. And we'll take this guy. Maybe we'll have a little bit of snow off of him. 
All right, but not all in the same direction or the same amount. Just dumping it off the knife, right? That's all we're really doing. And then we're gonna shape it just very lightly and it's gonna wanna disappear. It's gonna wanna turn into whatever color is underneath it, right? So just very softly in some, some spots or rougher in some areas. If you want it to be, if you want it to blend a little bit more, go over it a few more times. It will blend, it will become perfect. However you want it to be is gonna be the best way. Look at that, very neat. So you know, there's a little bit too much shadow in front of that tree, which makes my eye think that the light is coming from this way and it's casting that shadow. But it's only because we pulled out with our brush in that direction. All right, so we make it a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter, and now all of our light is still coming from that side. Very cool. Let's take the last little bit of our white that we have from up here. Why don't we just bring it down this crazy hill. Just like that, very neat. Take our one or two inch brush, however you want, and just shape it down. Remember, it's not all perfect. Not all of it is high lit. So this is still snow, even though it's not white. Based off of our brush strokes, pulling it down. Very cool, very neat. You know what, just for, just for my own eyes and because I like to sit here and paint with you so much, why don't we do another little bit of fence? We're gonna come out over here. Gorgeous little thing. All right, they're starting to go up the hill. So we're gonna have to change our level of, of uh, where they are, how our fence is gonna move, everything's gotta change. So go back, scrape up a little bit. All right, say we're coming on this angle like this. Just a little dark line. One on the top, one on the bottom, right? Just like that. All we're really doing, then we can change. I mean, you could change the, the whole, you could bring this guy down further. You could do all sorts of things, but why don't we continue on maybe a little bit sharper of a turn to now where it's going up at a different angle. You see what I mean? And then again, I'm trying to match that same angle as directly above here. And now we'll have a cool little fence start to go off the side. All been, again, we're gonna match the angles. We don't have to paint another beam, but we do have to paint it going off the edge. Otherwise, it's just gonna kinda look funny just sitting out there, there we go. Again, this guy can come down as far as you want until you shape what it looks like, right? So back here, don't really wanna move the base of that leg too much. Just start to shape him back to the edge of that white, right? That's what we can see. So, just like that, starts to get deeper snow over here. Very cool, very cool. Even starts to flatten out on this side, right? All, you can come up like this and then go down again. All depends on what you want it to do, right? If there's a, just something in your brain, you're like, oh, it would be neat if there was a little bit of kind of white snow right here on the edge, that little bit of color in there, right? And then, oh, just even by doing that, I pulled that little bit of blue over there, all on accident. Not what I wanted to do, but accidentally. Okay, come back to this blue that's over here and then match up our knife, go down the other way. And all of a sudden you have a cool little ridge that now lives back in here, just like that. Again, very softly going over it because I don't want to lose the color. I don't want it to blend away, but I want it to look messy. Want it to look messy. There we go. Just like that. Let me take a little bit more of that. We'll go that white blue offset color again. So we'll go white over here, all in the areas where it would be light, all right? The sun is coming down, hitting over here. Maybe it even reached the edge of our little blue shadowy area right there. And then the sun started to light it up again, all right? Oh my, what is all that black in there? My goodness, scrape all that off. Don't need all that black. I must've picked it, yep, right there, scraped it up. But it's okay, watch. Mix it in, all right, gorgeous little thing. Now all up the side of this guy, he would be much brighter, right? If all this was in the sun and that was our shadow, see what I mean? See what I mean, jelly beans? Up to the edge, a little bit of light, a little bit of darkness, all over the place. Now for this guy, we'll probably end up using all of our white. 
little things though, not perfect. Go over it so it doesn't look perfect, right? You never want snow, at least I don't. I've, again, I've been driving around for uh, the last week and the snow is never a perfect thing, let me tell you that. Hello. Never perfect. There we go. Very cool, very cool. You can take this guy up here. All right. Differences, little different things, little different places that got lit up. All right. Maybe that guy over here picked up more of that black again. I'm just not having a good time right here. There we go. All right. Even make some of that black work for you as the shadow. Pull it off the other way. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very neat. All right. Now, you guys know me. Got to soften it just a little in those same angles. This guy was off that way. Over here, very lightly touching, starting to go up. Tracking upwards how we did with the opposite of our knife. Very cool, very cool. Almost forgot our little bit. Need our liquid white again, coming in here. I'm glad we still have some white left on the canvas. Now from the other side, we've gotta be on the same side with our, our highlights, right? Same side as this. We went on the right side, we gotta go on the right side over here. Another little scrape on the right, a little bit. Doesn't even all have to be perfect or the same. Just a little bit of lag out there. There we go. Just by touching and, and pulling back sometimes is all you really need to do. Come on the top, right? Just like that. Now the snow never rests all the same. You know, it's never all gonna be the same kind of thickness on top of your branch or your piece of uh, of fence. So they don't all have to match is what I'm saying. There we go. They don't all have to look the same. They don't all have to be perfectly straight. I've seen some funky looking fences out there. Let me tell you. All right. Well, I think that one is good enough to throw the signature on. And what do you guys think? Let's go into our kind of blackish crimsony purpley color with our low odor mineral spirits and our long little uh, script liner brush here. Twisting it as we go through, right? So it becomes nice and sharp. And now we'll grab the old mall stick. You can guys get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. It's just a yard stick that uh, it's got paint all over it now. And we'll come out here. A couple little things, little teeny things, right? Go drop down a little bit. Make that one a little bit longer on one wing. And then maybe we'll come down like this, just so they're all different. They're never all going to be flapping all the same, all at the same time, right? Very cool. That is a cool little painting. Notice all that fog at the base of the trees back there. It allows stuff to sit in front and give you those that distance that you really need to make these paintings look so cool, right? Very neat. Very neat. There is one little area that's bothering me, and it's just under this guy. There's just not enough shadow there we go see adding it back in helps everything helps i'm telling you everything helps okay so well i can't wait to see your guys's version of this painting it really came out fantastic let's throw the old jk on there who knows we'll do it down here i guess so remember to send in your versions you can send them in on twitter you can send them in on facebook you can send them in on instagram uh, anywhere where we can receive a photo and a comment, then send it over to me because I want to see it. It makes London's Day, my wife. She loves seeing all of them. And then I send them over to her and she makes these crazy awesome kind of fan appreciation posts, puts them all into big things. And this one is going to be fun. So I really hope you try it. And I hope you guys had fun. And until we see you again on the next time, <laughs> until we see you again on the next one, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. And pow, pow, get them out of here. My goodness. Hi there, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 18 by 20 inch. Hi there, welcome back to Paint with Josh. You look amazing. Did you eat enough? Did you get enough feet? Stupid. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch gorgeous sunset, lenticular clouds, beautiful snowy mountains, down into red. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did it. See, you're excited about painting this one. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Why am I still doing this? Because I've messed it up already. Blah, blah, blah. Okay.